What's up, booktubers? It's your girl Mia coming at you today with another video. Okay, so it is pouring now, raining outside, as you can see from my like terrible lighting. Let me see if I can light it up just a little bit more. Okay, that's a little bit better. Not a lot, but a little bit. But anyway, since it's raining, it's just a blah, boring day. I decided to do the rainy days book tag today. Um, I apologize. I cannot remember the original creator's name or her channel, but I will link it. I'll put it on the screen somewhere uh, where you guys can go and check it out and play along if you like. And with that being said, we're going to jump right into the questions. Okay. My trusty paper. <laughs> uh... Question one, Rain, pick a book that makes you cry every time you read it. Now, I could not think of a book that I've read yet that's made me cry as of right now off the top of my head. So I'm just going to go ahead and go with one that I know made me cry for emotional reasons. And that was the You Are a Badass, How to Stop Doubting Your Greatness and Start Living an Awesome Life by Jen Sincero. This is one of those self-help books that really makes you take a look at yourself and what you want out of life and how you perceive uh, how you look at life yourself and if you're like me and you're super emotional you're going to shed a tear or two after reading this book and realizing that you want so much more out of life and you don't want to waste any more time in achieving what you want and yeah this book made me cry so we're going to just go with this one here <laughs> question two puddle pick a book where the world is underwater or mostly around water once again couldn't think of one where the world was completely underwater, but I'm going to choose a book that water plays a significant role in it, and that is going to be The Lightning Thief um, from the Percy Jackson series. This is book one in his series, and Percy is the son of Poseidon, which is the god of water. If I'm, I think I'm saying it right, he's the god of water, so water does play a big part in the book here because Percy also can manipulate water. Um, to use it to his advantages when he's fighting other gods and other demigods and things of that nature. So, although the world is not underwater, Percy Jackson is in a lot of water. So, we're going to go with that one for our answer to this question. Uh, question three. Rain Boots. Pick a character with a damn soul. This one, I'm going to have to go with Queen Lavana from the Luna Chronicles series. This is her companion novel, Ferris, where it goes deep into her story about why she is the way she is. And she is just an evil bitch, okay? She will do she will do anything to regain the the uh the throne. And I mean like she burned her own knees. So those of you who read the Luna Chronicles know what I'm talking about. Because it, it was explains all of that in Cinder. And I, the the stuff that this lady does in this book will really have you like <laughs> If she could do that to her own family, what would you think she would do to you as an enemy? Let me tell you. So, there is just, like, no redemption for this woman here. And, oh, yeah, she's she's hellish, yeah. <laughs> Next question. Umbrella. Pick a book that was big and comforting. So, for this one, I'm going to have to go with one of my favorites, and that is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. Ra 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 <laughs> And it's comforting because it reminds me back when I was, when I first went to uh, college, like I literally could have wrote this book myself. We shared a lot of the same interests, uh, me and the main character, Kath, in this book. Um, just uh, the first foray into going into college and being, you know, a writer, a loner, trying to fit in and things of that nature. So to read it from another perspective a couple of years later from when I was um, like this character here, it was kind of comforting to know, like, hey, this really does happen to everybody. It's not just somebody who's being singled out. A lot of people, uh, first-time students and people go through this also. So, yeah, so this was one of my favorites. Hold it dear to my heart. Really love this book. You should read it. It's really good. Mm -hmm. Rainy Day Movie. Pick a book that was turned into a movie you love to watch on rainy days. Um, I'm going to have to just go with a safe answer on that one because I couldn't really think of a lot of movies. So with that, I'm going to go with any of the Harry Potter movies by J.K. Rowling. They're long enough where you can just marathon them and it'll take you throughout the whole day. A whole rainy day at that where you kind of forget that it's raining outside because it kind of sets the mood for the tone of the movies. A lot of the movies start off, um, they're pretty like dark. The tone is low. It's very, you know, 
spooky, eerie kind of stuff going on. So definitely on a rainy day with nothing else better to do, I'll pop in a Harry Potter movie. Okay, next question. Coffee. Pick a book that you couldn't get enough of the hot and steamy romances. So for that one, I don't have a physical copy of it, but I'm going to have to go with the Canesville novel series by um, uh, Kelly Armstrong. I can't believe I can remember her name. Kelly Armstrong. And this series has such a great love triangle. The main character, Olivia, was in love with two men, Rick and Gabriel. And I'm not going to tell you who she ended up with because that will be a major spoiler. But let's just say... She could have ended up with either one of those guys and I would have been happy with it because they both fit her so well. And when she was with each guy, one she was with sexually, the other guy she was with more emotionally, it was just like, I could not put the book down. I was like, oh my God, like this is so hot and steamy. Like <laughs> I loved every bit of it. And usually I hate love triangles, but this one was very believable and even in the midst of all that, they were all friends, which you really don't see. They're always like the guys was enemies or the girl can't make up her mind. This one was very believable. I loved it. If you didn't read it, you got to read it. Very good series. Very good. Next question. Poncho. Pick a book where the main character has an, an amazing best friend. That was an easy one. I'm going to have to go with, and I don't even know this is him on the cover, but <laughs> Simon from the Shadowhunter series by Cassandra Clare. That kid would have done anything for Clary, okay? He turned vampire for her, even though it was it was an accident, but he did turn vampire for her. He uh he battled an angel for her. And she and he even let her put like the mark of death on his forehead. Like remember when they was going to war and Clary, you know, she can make the the ruins and ruins. And she put, like, the death mark on it's something where he couldn't die or something. I can't remember. But anyway, it was, like, a really big deal, and he trusted her enough to do that. Even though they was past that point where he stopped pining for her and realized that they was just going to be friends. But their friendship bond was so strong that he totally jumped into this world with her. And he wasn't a shadow hunter. He had nothing to do with it. And yet he stuck by her, st uh, stuck by her side the whole time. So that was pretty awesome. You tell me what type of friend will do that because hell no, nah, it was not me. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> okay, next question. Gutters, pick a book where the world is grimy and dirty in the way you would imagine it. That one was an easy one too. I'm going to have to go with Lee Bardugo's Six of Crows, another awesome book, which is set in like, it's kind of like mobby almost, like the mob if it was in a fantasy world. So you have like the gutter, the streets, you got like these taverns where shady stuff is going on. You got people that had the, the Grishas with their magical powers and like the black market and everything. So this book was very descriptive in the sense of like, I can seriously picture um, how everything looked in there. It was awesome, it was great. And you, you guys know, come on, Six of Crows, best book of the, whenever year it came out, awesome. Uh, next question, Cuddly Pet. Pick a book that had out of this world or very enjoyable pets in it. Okay, so this one I don't have a physical copy of, but I'm going to have to go with Starflight. I can't even remember the author's name, but it's called Starflight. <laughs> and they had like this, it was like a crew on the ship. They was traveling around the world, out of the space world. <laughs> and they had like the little ship mascot was like a little chipmunk. And it lived in the coat pocket of the captain. And the captain was like this real big, mean, burly guy. But his pet was like a little chipmunk out in freaking space. And it was just so cute, so adorable. They had a scene where like the plane, excuse me, the um, the ship was like crashing. And they're all running around trying to figure out what to do. And the captain is like, where's my chipmunk? Where's the chipmunk? <laughs> So I thought that was just very cute, very different. You don't see that a lot in books. So like the, the animal playing such a big role in it. So that was pretty refreshing to see. Guys, we're at the last question. I'm sad now. Uh, sweet Treat. Pick a book that had the sweetest ending. Okay. No physical copy of it, but I will be getting it soon. And that's going to be Geekarella. I absolutely adored this book. And the ending was so sweet because 
once the guy and the girl find out who they really are because it's kind of based off they don't know that they're they don't know who each other is because they're talking via text messages throughout the whole book but once they find out who the other person is and it's just it's just so cute it's like one of those like cute little love stories and he goes and he finds her and professes his love to her and they even have this scene where he's trying to find her and he's like in this big orange food truck barreling down a country road <laughs> trying to look for her and she has no clue what's going on it's so cute you gotta read it it was one of those really cute cutesy little little cutesy book i'm sorry i can't think of another word but i really liked it i really enjoyed it so we're gonna go with that one okay so that's it guys we we answered all the questions so i'm gonna go ahead and end it there thank you so much for watching comment down below did you read any of these books? Did you like any of them? What are some of the answers to your favorite questions? Let's have a discussion about it. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe. See you guys in the next videos. Okay, love ya. Bye.